Welcome back to Bell Line 5 TV One's coverage of the 2017 U Sport Final Eight Men's National Basketball Championships. And at half of the bronze medal game, the McGill Redmen have a 33 to 25 lead over the host Dalhousie Tigers. Should be a great second half. Let's take a look at some first half highlights and we'll be back in about three minutes with the second half right here on TV One.
welcome back to Bell Line 5 TV One's coverage of the 2017 U Sport Final Eight Men's Basketball Championships brought to you by Arcelor Middle Do Fosco. Our product is steel, our strength is people, Arcelor Middle Do Fosco. And at the half, the McGill Redmond have a, looks like they actually changed the score. It's 32 to 25 is the official score coming into the second half here. So things a little bit easier for the Dow Tigers who had a tough time offensively in that first half. Yeah, we finished the half with 33 on the main scoreboard for McGill as well here in the arena. So, and a little bit of an adjustment. There was some controversy over the points in the Ryerson Dow game last night at the table as well. So they're gonna make sure to get it right in the bronze medal game. Now Ogundekin. Over for Lung. Jenning Lung, I found out at halftime, he's graduating, so final game of the McGill career of Jenning Lung. Now, Ogan Doken on the jumper. Kick out again for Lung off the offensive rebound. It's great to see seniors get a chance to go out with a win in any scenario. Ogan Doken straight on three, that rims out. And Coach DeViro showing some frustration, but that was a good they used 38 seconds of shot clock on that possession. Yeah, and it was a straight on three. That's an easy one. Couldn't get it to go. Sometimes that happens, but Stamberger absorbed some nice contact there. Kept it on the right hand. Stamberger picking up where he left off. Ties Capos for the Tigers lead with eight points. It's down to a five point Redmond lead. Ogan Doken turns that one over. Intercepted by Lawrence and here come the Tigers. Stamberger, kick out, Jared Reed, three ball, rims out. That release looked pretty nice from Reed that time, kept it high, that was halfway down. Now Deu in the post. As that one stripped and stolen by Reed, leaves it for Kanzamata. Kanzamata, athletic looking take, can't finish. Lung did a good job of cutting off the drive there for Richie whole lot of indecision on that offensive play and then Peterkin <laughs> gets into the body of Cash. Let's see this one again. Comes across. Well, he did take it in the chest. He went a little Dylan Brooks on it, but that's all good. He, went, he sold the call. There's been a couple of those where both Cash and Ogundekin have jumped on the hedge very nicely. And Zamata now kick out for Aquino Sergio. He resets. Three ball. Gets it to go off glass, and actually they're going to call it a long two. That hit the glass hard, Al. It's still got a dab. Well, he likes that pull-up jumper. If he can extend his range to the three-point line, he'll be a scorer to watch in this league for years to come. Yeah, shooting's not the problem. We saw him in that possession at the end of the first half over dribble it. That's where he kind of have a little more sense of when to move the basketball. It'll come back to him. He'll get another open shot. As with the three, well, really four graduating Tigers, players like Aquino Sergio and most notably Sven Stamberger will have a big role to feed next year. Let's These take a guys. look at uh, some of the battle here between two of the strongest players in the whole country. Yeah, so you see a little, little hole, little run up. Cash try to get by him. These guys are both some monsters locking arms. And Zamata spins one way, fakes the other. Aquino Sergio able to save it. Now Stamberger from the outside knocks it down. Sven Stamberger showing the inside outside game up to 11 points, and the Tigers tied up. So they've erased that 10 point deficit. Great find, second chance points. Aquino Sergio's hustle factor's been off the charts this game. Peterkin for three, that rims out, but Francois Bork continues to do all the dirty work down low. Bork up to 10 points, five rebounds for the fourth year forward. Yeah, he's just strapping that mask on and going to work inside. And Zamata takes the screen from Capos. Gets it over now to Stamberger and lots of contact there and the foul's gonna go against Ogan Dokin and the McGill bench not happy with that call. Stamberger's in some discomfort as well. 
You say he might be holding his shoulder. Might have got the wind knocked out of him some. Ogadoka was fighting hard to come up from the baseline to catch up with Stamberger. Richie's gonna pull it back. You see, comes up. He gets jammed up there. Could just be a win thing. Didn't see his shoulder get cranked really bad. He's moving around now, both arms. That's good to see, but. Yeah, never want to see a player go down in the final game of the season. And a guy like Sven Stamberger, all the work he's done to improve his game. You know, should talk. He, he's got about 40 family members here this weekend. <laughs> yeah. The Stamberger, Pendergast, Crosby family, well known in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island basketball. Yeah, they, they've emptied Prince Edward Island to come watch Sven Stamberger this weekend. This guy is a legacy basketball player. You know, it's well documented. His mom coaches the Dalhousie the Lady Tigers. His sister played there, had a great career. And, you know, I love the story, Al. You touched on it the first night. Walk on guy, didn't have a jersey his first year, and now he's an absolute stud on a nationally ranked ball club. And he's going to be one of their key players next year as a fifth year. Right now, he checks out. Aquinu Sergio bears that pull up jumper, gets it to go. He's starting to heat up, too. He's got six. Getting a and look at some of the future Tigers and Stamberger, yeah. Capos, and Aquino Sergio leading the team today. And that's to your early point, when he can catch the basketball and shoot it. He's a very talented player. That's what he has going for him right now this particular year. Peterkin, Shanning Lung now, goes baseline up and can't get it to drop. But Shanning Lung is a player I really enjoy watching. Uh, had the opportunity to interview him after their quarterfinal win over Manitoba. Very well-spoken, humble guy. And he's another guy. He was a former walk-on, much like Stamberger. Went from walk-on to two-time RSCQ All-Star. Guy who can fill it up, 14 points per game, 40% from beyond the arc. Yeah, you look at him, he's got the build of a guy you might see running an intramural squad. But he comes out here and absolutely torches defenses. Blows by the initial guy there on the baseline. Takes some contact from Cash, almost made that one. He's got some great hair too. Shining Lung, <laughs> a little bit of jealousy I sense from my broadcast partner. <laughs> As now Kanzamata into the double team, up for Stroud at the top of the key. Back for Kanzamata, defended by the long athletic Peterkin and Peterkin. Did a good job to stay with him and force the turnover, although it's going to remain Tiger's ball on the tie-up. How about that wall of arms? You got Peterkin and Dow swallowing you up. Richie's a talented guy, but even he couldn't get that pass through. Five seconds in the shot clock. Reed gets it in for Aquino Sergio. Another pull-up. This time off rim, but Kanzamata is there for the rebound. The Tigers trail by two. Down low for Lawrence, can't finish. Kasherel Lawrence still held off the scoreboard today, but Kan Zamata is fouled. Good awareness and anticipation by the fifth year playing in his final U Sports game. Yeah, they get the old board, pulls it out, and then Ogutnikin just comes storming out there. Richie's a decent three-point shooter, but it's not like you're chasing Ray Allen down. He came out full speed, no discipline at all in that closeout. Now Kanzamata on the free throw line. Hits the first. Let's talk a little bit about this guy. So all-time AUS leader in assists. Over 600, more than 70 more than the second place guy. Two-time AUS Defensive Player of the Year. Two-time AUS First Team All-Star. Was an AUS All-Rookie Team member. What a career he's had for the Tigers. Well, he's had the pleasure of finishing his career for a coach that stresses discipline offense, organized offense. Richie's the floor general, he gets it done. But guys are in the right spots. There's off ball screens, there's motion, there's cutters, all kinds of stuff that allows him to get 70 more assists than the next closer guy. And he has the skill to put it to work. And this is the Tigers we're used to seeing, picking up the defensive intensity. Shot clock down to three, but Bork, once again, right spot, right time. Able to convert and push the lead back up to two. Here's Lawrence. Can't get it to go, but heavy contact, and he's headed to the free throw line. Yeah, McGill got all kinds of physical play on the sideline in the initial play. Borg managed to get points out of it. This time, Dow pushes quickly in transition. 
one of the few times you'll see out of position down there. Beckett, normally very good at defensive train. But Cash and the Dow Tigers in a pick em ball game now. And Coach Dave DeViro takes a timeout, and we're going to step aside, but we'll be right back with more bronze medal action on 5TV1. Dozens of maritime children are injured each year when TVs and furniture fall on them. Avoid putting things children want on top of the television. Never place heavy TVs on top of unstable furniture. Use a low, stable surface and push it back as far as possible. If a child might climb on it, attach furniture to the wall with safety straps or anchors. Supervise small children at all times. Save the clown for the playground. For more information on preventing injuries, visit childsafetylink.ca. Hockey, soccer, hockey and swimming. Sport builds confidence and great teamwork skills. Gets the heart going. It's a good way to stay healthy. It keeps kids out of trouble. It's good for discipline. I'll go and I'll play sports and then I'll go study afterwards. And I can focus more on what I'm trying to learn. Reaping the benefits afterwards in things like education, jobs, family. I love winning medals. I love working hard. I love it all. Welcome back to 5TV1's coverage of the Final Eight Bronze Medal Game live at the Scotiabank Center in Halifax and Adam. It's 12.45 local time. Look at this crowd. Look at this band. Look at the fan support that the Dow Tigers have done or have gotten all weekend. A tremendous job by Dalhousie Athletic Director Tim Maloney and everyone involved in hosting this tournament. They've galvanized the university across the board. You see the bands here, the academic side supporting the athletics department is literally one unit no matter what sport it is their support has been just exceptional the city of halifax has embraced the dalhousie tigers st mary's has come along for the ride this year getting in there as well you know it's been some great crowds energetic crowds there was so much disappointment when dalhousie lost last night but there was so much appreciation expressed they got standing ovation to finish walking off the court People know how hard these guys have worked to get to this point. And it's been a pleasure to watch. They've supported everyone here with great play. As Lawrence goes one of two from the line, and yeah, you know, a group of guys in Kanzamata, Reed, Lawrence, as well as Stroud, all originally from Ontario, but all have really taken Halifax as a second home and given a lot back to the basketball community here and the future players as well. Now Bork on the dribble drive, puts it up. And the foul is going to go against Bork. I think that's a great point too, Alan. The community service piece for Dalhousie. Castro Lawrence wins the service award for the AUS. His speech at the awards banquet was so fantastic. He advised all young players. He said, listen, I never gave back to the community until later in my career. Didn't realize how important it was. Didn't realize how much of a role model we really are as university guys. And he said, go out there, do it right away. It enriches your university experience. It certainly enriches your community. And it's been a big plus. Again, another U sport thing that you just want to check the box and say, excellent. As Reed knocks down two free throws and then Cashra Lawrence went on to win the national honor, the Ken Shields Award, and what an honor that is as Dalhousie back into this 2-1-2 press. Now Lum, defended at the top of the key by Reed. Shot clock down to eight. Dal with a one-point lead here. They battled back in this third quarter. And it's going to remain Redmond ball, but just four seconds to go on the shot clock. Quick follow-up, Alan. Marquise Clayton's on the sideline over there signing all kinds of autographs. There's about 10 kids surrounding him. St. Mary's local guy. That's what the role model thing's about. See what McGill does here. Now long, long three ball. Can't get that one to go off glass. Stamberger now on the kick out. Aquinu Serju drives and finishes. And Dal now 
three-point lead. They battled all the way back. They were down 14 points with four minutes to go in the second quarter. Well, they weren't going to go away. Settled in up the defensive pressure after Dalhousie timeout mid-second quarter. Started to turn McGill over. All of a sudden, the offense is not comfortable. They're not getting the touches they used to have. They're not getting the feet in the paint they used to have. So a big testament, but as I say that, they get a curl, Stamberger falls a little bit asleep. And Beckett able to finish down low, nice post-to-post -post passing there from the Redmond. One point game here, another close game. I don't think the Tigers know how to play them any other way here at the Scotiabank Center. Not one that I can remember anyway. Kanzamata, a couple of defensive player of the year from their conference going at it. And Dele Ogundakan wins that round, forcing Kanzamata into the turnover. That's the other thing elite officiating gets you, is you can't draw these fouls by just high stepping your feet and falling out of bounds. They'll give you the turnover even if you fall out of there. If you didn't get fouled, you didn't get fouled. And Stroud picks up a foul in the backcourt, trying to keep up with Jenning Lung. Going to be the third personal on Ryle Stroud in his final U Sports game. He's had some bad luck here tonight. Got himself in some tough spots. He just needs to screen and rebound and let these guys do work. Now he's holding inside. There's four. And Stroud battling down low with Beckett. Just got his arm right around Beckett's waist once it goes to the wing here. And you see he has him low and high for that matter. That's an easy pickup. Stroud is going to stay in the game with four personals. Cadogan, post look here for Beckett. Beckett fading away, can't connect. Stroud with a big rebound. Now here come the Tigers. It's Kanzamata over for Stamberger, attacks. And has that one poked loose, Beckett recovers. Ogundokin, down low for Beckett. Good job by Stamberger to cut off the passing lane and able to force Beckett into a travel. And now Stroud's going to check out with those four personal fouls. Sasha Kapos, the six foot ten Floridian. You know, there's a great uh, article in the local express. I've told the story once or twice, but Sasha Kapos, his father, Tom, was a member of the 1978 national champions here at St. Mary's, a game you still hear about to this day. Right. 11,000 people here at the Metro Center, as it was known at the time, for a game against Acadia. And a teammate of Rick Plato's with those Smew Huskies teams. Now Capos finds himself playing for his father's former teammate on their crosstown rivals. Well, his father's a smart man to get him in Coach Plato's hands. People who haven't seen film or video of Coach Plato as a player, he was a stud in his own right. Physical specimen. He worked as hard as he coaches now, which is off the charts effort level. And Sasha's father, Tom, was a pretty great player as well. Went on to play for the Canadian national team. And Sasha's even taller as Ogan Doken now. Kick out, Bork, over for Lung, three ball. Jenning Lung, you can't give him that much space. He'll take you every time. Eight points now for the guard in his final U Sports game. You said it, ogandoka has been consistently giving up the basketball for his teammates' benefit. And Lung with a smart defensive play. Now Ogandokin attacks the other way and finishes. And it's the All-Stars here taking over in Lung and Ogandokin giving the Tigers fits in this third quarter. He absolutely shed Sven Stamberger, got rid of him with strength, laid that in like it was practice time. Reed now, one-legged fall away, can't hit. McGill on a 5-0 run here. Ogan, uh, Lung rather gets it to go again. It's Ogan Doken and Lung hooking up and they gotta put a body on Jenning Lung. Yeah, you're right, it's one of the two of them who's gonna shoot it. That time it was long moved to the other side of the floor. Another assist for McGill as well. Look at the efficiency. Lung has 11 points on five field goal attempts. Three of five all coming from downtown. And 12 assists on 18 field goals as well. Not a lot of isolation basketball going on there. 
Nice flare out to Stamberger. Almost loses his footing, manages to balance out. Bork got caught underneath, got shook by the crossover. You know, as good as Stamberger is, he has room to grow. A lot of that is, you know, he can dribble straight line. He's starting to change direction. It's still a little bit wobbly, trying to get himself from low to high. He's going for those dunk finishes now. He's not making a lot of them in traffic. He'll make the wide open ones. But the next step is to be more balanced, more explosive, tighter on the dribble. And then he's going to be, like you said, his fifth year, his numbers are going to implode. Explode, as not implode. What am well, I saying? As you mentioned earlier, he brings a little something, works very hard in the summertime. Of course, a son of a coach. So as Lung again, Channing Lung, eight points in the last minute, and he's pushed it up to an eight point. Redmond Lee, he's in full sweat out there. He's sprinting around both ends of the court. Finishes with speed, that's what's impressive about him. And Lung gets another steal. The Redmond are gonna hold for one here. They're on a 10-1 run. Lung, defended by Kanzamata. Looking back door for Ogundoka. Puts up a tough shot. And that followed by Bork after the whistle, so that'll do it for the third quarter. Dalhousie, the Tigers came out roaring, taking the lead, but it was all Jenning Lung coming down the stretch. One of his two three balls to give the Redmen an eight-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. We'll be right back on TV One. There's magic in an early morning. Being awake and on the go before anyone else. Committed, dedicated. It might not always be easy to get up early, to find the time, to make the effort. But when it's something you love, it's worth it. When it's love, you put everything on the table. Coasting through life isn't an option. Coasting through anything isn't an option. Find what drives you at Dalhousie. Welcome back to Bell Lion 5 TV One's coverage of the U Sports Final Eight bronze medal game. And the Dalhousie Tigers able to go on a bit of a run early in that quarter. But down the stretch, it was the Redmen. Finished the quarter on a 10-1 run over the final 140, and Jenning Long was the catalyst. Right when you felt like Dalhousie was keeping this a one possession game, was going to battle down to the buzzer. They went nuts. Lung hit the shot. Ogundoga went Mr. Physical. Dropped that one down. Lung goes to the left side of the floor now. Two straight assists. The hookup. Ogundoga to Lung. We've been talking about it all night long. Now he takes it inside the arc in transition. Two Tigers. Doesn't matter. Lung with the finger roll. This guy is going out in his last game with a bang, Allen. Eight point lead. Dow, do they have one last comeback in them for 2016 2017? As the Tigers, you know they're going to leave it all on the floor. The final university game of four of their key seniors Richie Kanzamata, Jared Reed, Cashrell Lawrence, and Ryle Stroud. Another look at the great crowd here at the Scotiabank Center, and there'll be a great crowd as well this afternoon to support two Oda Town teams, two Ontario teams in the final, Ryerson and Carleton. What a matchup that's going to be coming up at 2 o'clock on Sportsnet. We see right away Dahazi just denying these wings. Lung can't get a touch. 
But the backside guys, they're doing all this work on the wings. You're denied, denied, denied. Then they cut through the paint, get an open layup. That's backbreaking. And Bork, such a smart player, always in the right place, right time. Up to 12.7 rebounds now, very efficient, five of eight from the field. But there's Cashrell Lawrence, knocks down his first field goal. Started this one off over seven. Takes it back to an eight point Redmond lead. Love that. Kick out for Kadogan. Kadogan, out for Ogundokin, down low for Deu, and he's whistled for steps. Yeah, not sure if he didn't realize he had the switch or just felt Akinu Sergio up underneath him, didn't know which side to pick for his footwork but he had a major size disadvantage. Let the help side come by that point, and he shuffled the feet. So the Tigers now looking to cut into this eight point Redmond lead. Nine minutes remain in their season. And Zamata dished down for Reed and seen that once or twice. Reed can't finish, but he's gonna to go to the free throw line. Yeah, good read by the Tigers that time. The movement exchanged through. Reed gets himself free, and he's gonna go for two more free throws. You see, working that side of it, Jenning Lung just got caught up. Dow had to come in. Well, they're gonna get the foul from behind to Lung in the end, it's his third personal. Four for four now, Jared Reed from the free throw strike. Seven point Redmond League now. Now Ogan Token and a little bit of pressure there from the Tigers of Queen Usurju. And a couple words after the play is I'm sure those two played against each other growing up in Quebec. Yeah, no doubt. They try to go over the top. That's the space McGill wanted to break the pressure, be able to cut up the middle of the floor with space. Over aggression there from Keen Usurju. Now Teu down low for a cutting Ogan Token and can't finish. Lots of contact on that one. Lawrence. Lots of contact. And Samata brings it across half. And Ogan Token on his back, gets it to Lawrence. Two hands, Cashrell Lawrence throwing it down. And the Tigers faithful give him a nice ovation, cutting it down to a five point lead. Can Zamata to Lawrence for the cram. And that's something Tigers fans have seen a lot of over the past five seasons. Well, he just <laughs> held Ogan Token in jail behind him. Bork's just staring at him. Somehow doesn't see this monster running the floor 90 feet. The throwdown for Cashrell. One more assist, one more rim rocker for the two fifth year Warriors. As the Redmen take a timeout, and right now we're gonna step aside for a break, but we'll be right back on TV One with the end of this one and Cashrell Lawrence showing off in his final university game. What do you think of this one? Too small? Yeah, I haven't worn that one in months. And those pants look a little too short. Let's help other kids in our community and give these items to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Big Brothers Big Sisters can turn your donations of clothing, shoes, and linen into funding for youth mentoring programs. To learn more about how Big Brothers Big Sisters is making a difference to kids in your community, visit bigbrothersbigsisters.ca. Way to go, girls. See how easy it is to help someone else? Hi, Quinn. When Nana visits, everyone's happy to see her. We all know how quickly kids can get into things, and that's why we keep poisons locked up. But have you ever considered what's in your purse? Things like hand sanitizers, tobacco, coins, and medication are all poisoning risks for small children. That's why we should keep handbags out of reach. It's a simple habit that will help keep our kids safe. Yeah! For more information on preventing children's injuries, visit childsafetylink.ca. 
Welcome back to Bell Line TV One's coverage of the 2017 U Sport Men's Final Eight Basketball Championships. And the government of Canada through Sport Canada is proud to support university athletes in Canada and congratulates U Sports on the leading role it plays in developing Canadian athletes. So the Tigers, a bit of a run there to end or to take us into that timeout, punctuated by the Lawrence dunk, and it's back down to a five point game. Yeah, five-point game. I should correct myself earlier. Jared Reed missed one or two free throws. He's three for four from the line, but Dalhousie slowly but surely cutting into this with discipline play, and it started at the defensive end. And the press that time, as Dal is going to take possession. Stamberger wanted it back over half, but they get it anyway on the tie-up. Well, he's right about that. Lung did touch it on the way across half, did not establish two feet. Nonetheless, alternating possession arrows go to the Tiger. So now Dalhousie with a chance to cut it down to a single possession game. Can Samata can't knock down the little 10-footer. It's interesting. He started asserting himself early with shot attempts, and he hasn't shot one in forever. He's only 0 for 4. It's been pure distributing. Bork now, confident hands of the fourth year, gets it over to Cadogan. Cadogan has it poked loose. Dal's defense is just swarming right now. And that pass. Cadogan was open but couldn't handle the Dayu beat. Well, that's fortunate for Dow once again. You know, Cadogan's patrolling that baseline. Stamberger has not been good at picking these guys up tonight. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Cash Rolls lost a couple of guys back there as well. The perimeter fellas, you're right. They've upped the Andy right now. McGill has the answer. But the pressure, the footwork, Dow. Both ends right now. Check that pass. Stamberger with a tough kick out and can some model whistle for dragging that pivot foot. And that's the other thing for Dow. McGill's been in their face a little bit on these closeouts, so they're not sure if they're going to get a three point shot. It's going to be a tough drive every single time. Dow only two of seven from behind the arc, so they're unsure what's going on out there. It has not been comfortable. That was a good example of that. And Dayu, the forward ending up bringing the ball across half, and he's whistled for a travel. So again, this Tigers press forces the turnover. Yep, right in their face. They're going to play it as soon as they kick that ball over half. That's where Dow wants the trap. They did that at the end last night, doing it well tonight. That's now 17 turnovers for the Redmen. That's really keeping the Tigers in it. The Redmen have shot the lights out 50% from the field, 40% from three. Yeah, you got to feel if they got more shots up, they'd be making more shots. That's how good they've been. But Dallas kept himself hanging around, but they keep having these deficits to fight from. Chaired Reed's three is short, but the Tigers get it back. Ten on the shot clock, under seven minutes remaining in the game. Kanzamata goes up against the RSEQ Defensive Player of the Year, and there's a Queen Usurju. Bit of a late call on the block, but certainly contact, and the McGill bench not happy with that one. Well, let's take a look. Kanzamata, good help in by Lung, loses him on the back door. Bork's there for the help. Great help by Francois Bork. Kind of stuck that hip out a little. I saw some contact. Akinu As... Sergi with the Halifax step through. Yeah, and right now Daniel Peeper, he's another graduating player, going to check in for a couple minutes here. Hasn't That's... seen too much action this weekend, but another fourth year guy for coach Dave DeVaro. And giving him some minutes here at Nationals. He had a decent first half. He only shot it once, but he was part of a length movement that helped McGill shut down Dalhousie for a big stretch at five, six consecutive stops. Get a rebounding foul coming up here against the Tigers, Sven Stamberger. And for Stamberger, that's just his first personal. Stamberger putting together a solid game today. He's got 12 points, and they've all come, 10 of those have come in the second half. Now Lung, and once again, the Dalhousie press forces the turnover. Lung and Peter can miss communication. Well, look how high Peter can had to come. He's being denied the whole way up. He's trying to pop to the top of the three, three uh, excuse me, three-point line, he ends up in the circle where they take the jump ball. There's no room to pass that ball. That's why it went flying out of bounds. Now Jared Reed. Reed. Now Kansamata is fouled, and it's 
going to be the third team foul against the Redmond, second personal against Michael Peterkin. And all of a sudden, Dalhousie's motor is churning down at the other end. They're the first aggressors. They're early in the shot clock. McGill's defense on their heels. Well, we said this game was going to be in the 50s or 60s, and so far it's living up to its billing as a defensive affair. And Oh, lots of contact there for... Uh, that's not our cameraman, but one of the cameramen took a bump from Stamber. Well, they're going to say he's not shooting here on this one, which hurts a little bit, but again, aggressive. Cashrell looks downhill. Good cut there. Peeper got blown up on the face cut. So did that cameraman. He did too. Danny Ledley showed it to him. And showed it to producer Neil coming through with the name. I had no idea. So even the referee about to inbound the ball, he signaled two shots. Now they're going to talk about it. And Coach DeViro is not happy. Maybe they're going to confirm who the foul was on as well. They have Peeper up on the board for his first personal. He's coaching this one. He knows that this is the momentum he wants for the program heading into next season. And you know, we haven't even mentioned a really promising McGill player as Stamberger attacks the rack, hangs and finishes, and he's headed to the line for a chance at three the old fashioned way. Cuts it to a two point game. How many times has Stamberger held the Tigers into a game? Not just a three point shooter, takes that inside scoop finish. Peepers in over his head guarding this guy. Stamber converts and he's up to a game high 15 points and the Tigers within two here. Do they have what it takes for one more magic moment at the Scotia Bank Center? It's actually a one point game. They just fixed the scoreboard. Stamberger goes down. Ogundakin, three ball, hits it. But that's what you do. You get the hands into your senior guy, your leading scorer. Every time Dalhousie gets a mini run, it's a Gunda Kuhn or it's Lung shutting it down. Stamberger again finds Lawrence on the pick, and Lawrence does what he does best, finishing down low. And we got ourselves a ball game here in the fourth quarter. Well, you mentioned Castrell hadn't hit a field goal until this quarter. He's got three quick ones. Now, again, the swarming defense of Dalhousie, and they get a steal. Kanzamata. To Aquino Sergio, Kanzamata is going to slow it up, find Stamberger, and another foul coming, and that's going to put Stamberger on the line. That's five team fouls. The Tigers are in the bonus. Five team fouls in the span of about a minute, 45 seconds here. McGill was very disciplined defensively to start the quarter. Dahousie started coming downhill on them early in the shot clock, and they haven't been set in their closeout. Stamberger hits the first. 75% free throw shooter out of Halifax Grammar School. Up now to a game high. 17 points after going two for two from the line and 13 of those 17 have come in the second half. 22 free throws on the game for Dalhousie. And another steal and another drive. Stamberger can't finish on the reverse but headed right back to the free throw line and the crowd starting to get behind the Tigers. It's all tied up. Sven's got a chance to give him the lead. Hustle play. Jared Reed saves it, falling out of bounds. Stamberger can't convert the long reverse attempt, but gets fouled. You, know, you mentioned McGill's offense going good at 50%, but they're giving it away to Dalhousie. 20 turnovers, 24 free throws after these two for Dow. They're playing a road game here. They got to tighten up the bolts. And the Tigers off to a 14 to five run to start this fourth quarter and give them the first lead they've had since early in the third. Now Lung, kick out for Ogan Doken, back to Lung. Final five minutes now of this bronze medal game here at the final eight in Halifax. Ogan Doken drives, lots of contact, no whistle, and it's gonna be Tigers ball. And Coach DeVira, once again, not happy with that call. Yeah, he's trying to find some consistency between the two things. See, he drives a step through. Stamberger picks up his right foot. You see, they went knee on knee there. They don't get the call. But Cashrell got away with gambling on the denial on the wing. Ogundoka got downhill. Reed now off for Kanzamata. 
Down to eight seconds on the shot clock. Kanzamata works around. Stamberger three ball. That's short. Hogan Doken tough board and Stamberger is going to be whistled for the foul. That'll be his second personal. Offensive rebounds hasn't really been a story for either team. As is typical with defensive ball clubs, they go block out and finish the possession. Single digits for both of these squads tonight. Dal hasn't been able to buy a three. Two of nine for behind the arc. Normally Stamberger's the guy you want shooting them, particularly late here at the Scotiabank Center. He's lethal, but 22% tonight, that's not gonna cut it. As into the final four and a half minutes of the career of a few great seniors and another great look at this Halifax crowd supporting University basketball all weekend long. What a weekend it's been. The place is packed and it's gonna be loud for a game that doesn't even feature any local teams. The final between the Carlton Ravens and the Ryerson Rams, a rematch of the Wilson's Cup. That's coming up on Sportsnet at 2 p.m. Well, this is a city that's appreciated great basketball from the early run of the national tournament being here to the reincarnation of it now. And the Dow Tigers putting on a show here in the undercard tonight. There's that scoop shot. He brought it back to the right hand that time, going length, takes skill to do that. This time, gets into the body of Peterkin, gets to the free throw line. There's the hustle play, comes in, he's fouled again. Peeper saying, what do I gotta do to keep up with this guy? He's deceivingly quick for his size. You look at Stamberger, you just see the lankiness of him. And he's not really an emotional guy, he's not in your face. He just goes about his business, makes the right play nine times out of 10. And he's exactly the type of player a coach loves having on his squad. Redmond once again find themselves in trouble with the Dalhousie press as a Queen of Sergio ends up at the on the lap of Matt Skin, the Calgary assistant in the crowd. And well, that's gonna be a foul whistled against the Tigers. Akinu Sergio got a whole lot of ball and three quarters of his body was past the McGill offensive player. Not sure where the foul was. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Could have been a lower body here. He's gonna shoot the gap. You see a Gundakun got his left shoulder pulled back. Perhaps a little bit, he's gonna get that call as a senior guy. But Dalhousie staying with the formula of what's working. Right around that mid-court area is where McGill's having trouble getting across. Channing Lung in his final university game. And Cashrell Lawrence nearly picked his pocket. Couldn't control that one and he gives a smile. Wishing he could have had that one back for the fast break jam. Yeah, he got thinking about going down for that jam before he had the ball in his hands. Great look at Cash, such a guy who wanted every single possession. Bork now, 45 feet away from the hoop, gets it over to Ogundoka. Now Lunk. Shot clock at two, Lung puts up a tough one off back rim, and the rebound, who wants it more? And oh my, Lawrence goes down awkwardly. Got tangled up with Ogan Doken, and these two big bodies continue to battle. Yeah, it's been a couple times both of these guys have been down on the hardwood, mixing it up. It's been a really fun matchup. Cash is gonna come over the top here to try to get this offensive board. Akina Sergio keeps it alive, and you see he kind of comes through. It's a little piece of Ogadoka's forehead, and then his left leg gets caught up behind him. It was a smart move to kind of go with the momentum, not try to hold himself up. That twist could have been worse. Yeah, Lawrence is a tough guy, though, and it's going to take more than that to keep him out of the final four minutes of his U Sports career. So with Ogadoka on the line, chance to tie it up or take the lead for the Redmen. Got ourselves another thriller. I don't think the Dow Tigers and Coach Rick Plato know how to play him any other way. Ogan Doken heading to the line, his first trip here tonight, which is kind of hard to believe with how aggressive he's been. But this is what happens when you wait this long to get there. Two of five from three. Again, that ankle injury on the left-hand side has limited his effectiveness. He's picked his spots a lot better in this ball game. And that's why McGill's offense has been flowing. Ogan Doken, just a 61% free throw shooter. There is one weakness in his very all around game. That would be it, but goes one of two and ties it up at 56. Four minutes to go. Who wants the bronze? 
Stamberger can't finish. Good contest there from Bork. Now the Redmond. It's Isaiah Cummins over to Peterkin. Peterkin attacks. Lawrence gives it to Bork. Now Lung on the left wing, drives baseline, finds a cutting. Ogan Doken can't finish, but Peterkin is there to clean it up and give the Redmen the lead. Well, I mentioned offensive rebounds hasn't been a factor. All of a sudden, back-to-back -back possessions. McGill keeps it alive on the second chance, turns it into points. Now Kanzamata. Going to use some shot clock here. Hands it off for Reed. Goes at Cummins. And Cummins whistled for the hand check, and that's going to send Reed to the line. Jared Reed keeping the pressure on Isaiah Cummins. Was going away from the rim. At some point as a defender, you need to disengage if the offensive dribbler is moving far away from that backboard and that orange rim, but stayed on his hip. The call was made. Dow getting these easy points with the clock stopped now, which fighting for behind is exactly what they needed to bring it back within one. As Reed knocks down a couple free throws. And we're all tied up once again, 58-58, 3-10 to play. Tigers spending a lot of energy on this defensive pressure. Peterkin, oh, nice job there to keep it from crossing half and get it over to Ogan Doken. And we have a charge. Isaiah Cummins picks up his second foul in 30 seconds. And DeViro is livid on the red men's sideline. And he's got teed up as well. Watch Akini Sergio step in. The official went to call block, then changed it midstream. DeVero was jumping up and down. Couldn't believe it. So it's going to be two shots. Oh, excuse me, one shot on the technical foul penalty. The team control foul for McGill before that. And Cummins is going to check out with four fouls. The Redmen going very big here with bringing back in Sebastian Beckett. As Reed knocks down the free throw, all six of his points on the evening, or on the afternoon, have come from the charity strike. That's the formula. You want it to slow down. You want to stretch this game out, extra possessions. They've got the turnovers, 21 big ones, as you said, Alan, for McGill. That's not going to win hardly any ball game. Somehow they're still in it with how efficient their offense has been. Lawrence now. Over for Kansamata. Now Jared Reed. The three fifth years out there for the Tigers. Stamber gets it over to Reed. Three ball. That's short. And Ogan Dokin with the rebound. Here come the Redmen. And another offensive foul. This time it's going to go against Beckett. Battling for position down low with Lawrence and gave him an elbow. Lawrence trying to front way up in the high post. He gets knocked down. Let's check it out. They try to run Beckett through the middle. And Lawrence just saw the tail end of it there. The big body went down. He's been a lot of time picking himself up off this Scotiabank center floor. And Zamata, 12 on the shot clock. Kick out Stamber, corner three, gets it to go. And the Scotia Bank Center erupts. Sven Stamberger, 21 points. The vast majority coming in this second half. That's the clutch one we've come to know from Stamberger. Kick out. Don't know how you lose that guy. Excellent penetration. And Got once, it out there. Once again, the Redmen struggling just to get it across half. Shot clock down to eight. Peterkin over for Lung. Beckett takes a hit. And Stamberger is going to be whistled for the foul. That's his third personal. And that's going to send Beckett to the free throw line for a pair. 75% free throw shooter is Sebastian Beckett, the fourth year forward out of Georgetown, Ontario. Well, you see he's patrolling that middle section of the court. McGill knows that the wings are being denied very hard. They want to get it to the middle. They felt like they've had success cutting the baselines. If they do catch it there, they look for those cuts and drop down passes. That's a big miss. Both teams have to stop fouling now to finish the game. Penalties in effect. Get back to the efficient roots of defense that you know. And Dow playing from ahead can lock it down. Uh, 
is Aquino Sergio now brings it across half. Two point ball game, 61 59 according to the in house scoreboard. And here's Aquino Sergio, 130 to play. Stamberger drives, dishes, what a pass! And Cashrell Lawrence is there. Smile on his face as he runs back up the court. No drop down help from Isaiah Cummins. Wrap around pass. Stamberger doing it all. Now Bork on the cut. Can Zamata contest, but he's whistled for the foul. Did well not to allow Bork to score, though. Very fortunate. This is not a three point play. Ogadokin, his passing has been great tonight. Slip to the rim. Kanzamata comes down, prevents the layup. And Bork misses the first. Tigers lead by four. Missed them both. Stamberger with the rebound. 110 to play. He misses for McGill, back-to-back -back trips down, splitting them. Aquino Sergio into the final minute of the season for these teams. Can't get the long two to go, and Bork with the rebound. That's not the shot they wanted, isolation for Aquino Sergio. McGill has a chance here to go two for one. Ogan Dokin, three ball, that's off. Huge rebound by Kanzamata, and he saved it from going out of bounds. And Aquino Sergio is fouled. He's going to head to the line with his team leading by four. Well, it's not all bad. You're down two possessions to Beer McGill. Send Aquino Sergio to the line. Down 77% from the line tonight. Jordan just one of two in his only trip. Dow needs to keep the basketball moving, get it in the right hands of the people they want down the stretch here, whether it's a free throw shooting situation or just taking care of the rock here if it's not a one possession game yet. McGill has to come down in a hurry, whether it's a make or mess. They still have two timeouts remaining. I got to imagine they're going to take one. And Coach Plato wants one on a make. So five point Tigers lead, 35 seconds to go. Misses the second, but the offensive rebound by Jared Reed. And the Tigers kill some clock. Lawrence, he's fouled. And big time rebound there from Jared Reed. Yeah, they wasted some seconds as well before fouling that time. 28.3 remaining. Block out your free throws. You got to block them out when it counts. Down the stretch. McGill falls asleep at a big time. As Cashrell Lawrence misses the first. Still a five point game here. McGill has a chance if they can get a bucket quickly. But Lawrence, the fifth year, the two time AUS championship MVP, can hit the second. Another offensive rebound for the Tigers. Unbelievable. It yeah. did take a bounce towards that tough area, but McGill have to be ravenous getting those boards. That's your life right now is the basketball when you're down this late in the ball game. And that's just a look of pure frustration from the McGill bench. And it's five personal fouls here as well on Cummins. So Isaiah Cummins fouls out. He's just a second here. I did really quickly want to mention, I brought him up earlier, Kendrick Jolin. The RSEQ Rookie of the Year, he'll be back next year for Coach DeViro. So, McGill, a very promising team. But right now, it's all about the Dow Tigers as they take a six-point lead with 24 and a half seconds to play. Yeah, regardless of what happens here, McGill is going to be ready to roll moving forward. They're going to take this time out and move the basketball into the front court. See if they get some execution. They need to go for some home run balls here, down seven, but. I asked the question, Alan, when they were down five, does Dow have that one last comeback in them? The answer is yes. You used the term that they were expending a lot of energy with about three minutes to go with all the pressure. But it speaks to how disciplined these guys are on a day-by-day -day basis in terms of taking care of their bodies, hitting the weight room, taking care of their fitness. To be able to play this hard, 
after the fighting and the coming from behind numerous times, night after night, last weekend in the AUS tournament two comeback wins, that's not easy to do. They have not cruised one time in a ball game in the playoff setting this season. And they're still fit enough to turn up the heat four quarters, three days in a row, and turn this ball game all the way around to a seven point lead. Really an amazing club. Yeah, it's been fantastic to watch over the past couple of years. It's ignited a whole new generation of Halifax basketball fans, not just the Tigers, the Smew Huskies, and players like Marquis e. Clayton, obviously, but this Dow Tigers team. You know, until last night's two-point loss, or the uh, one-point loss to Ryerson in the semifinal, they had won eight straight games here at the Scotiabank Center, none of them by more than 10 points. Yeah, and that speaks to you in itself, uh, being able to play in tight games, basketball, IQ, situational practice. We'll see what McGill has in store. They got a whole bunch of guys who can put it in the rack here from deep. They're gonna need one. Now Deu catches it, 30 feet away from the basket, gets it over Oak and Doak, and Lung puts it up and knocks it down. Jenning Lung is a true sharpshooter, big time player in the final moments of his U Sports career gets one to go. He's up to 16 points. Big shot. Lung, or excuse me, Ogan Doken, he had the open one. That's the most open three of the possession, but that's how much he trusts Jenning Lung. Richie Kanzamata closed out with that hand up, stroked it on him anyway. Ogan Doken showing respect, knowing what his teammate can do. That's nice execution for Miguel. Didn't burn a whole lot of time there either. So the Dow Tigers going to have to get it in bounds here. About 15 seconds away from their first ever U Sports men's basketball medal. And obviously they would have liked to be playing at two o'clock in the final, but what a season for them. Took it all the way down to the wire against the number one team in the country, the Ryerson Rams. And tonight up against the number three team, the McGill Mar uh, the McGill Redmen have given them everything they can handle. And you gotta remember, this is a team that was at the bottom of the rankings all year long, never got any love, came in here, kept going about their business. They took their five seed as the conference champion. They kept fighting, got through night one, had a great game last night. Now a medal is in their hands. Get the basketball in play, hit your free throws, and you got something to hang up on your wall. 24 of 33 from the line is Dow tonight. That's a ton of free throws on the game. Jared Reed, eight of nine from the field, or from the line, you gotta feel like they're gonna get him the ball. So Aquino serves you to inbound. Stamberger, Lawrence, Reed, and Kanzamata, the three fifth years all out there for the final moments of their career. And Delay a game here. warning there yeah. against McGill, stepped over the line. Inbound for Kanzamata. Ogan Doken wraps him up, and Richie headed to the free throw line. Yeah, they just updated Richie. There's six of seven for the free throw line as well. I didn't notice that coming in. So another good guy and a senior guy. This is the guy who didn't get to finish the game last night. You mentioned how disappointing that was, but they're settling in here now to be able to finish this game with Mr. Clutch at the free throw line. And that's gonna be five personals against Deli Ogundokin, but what a player he is. He had a fantastic weekend, matched up against some of the tougher opponents. You'll see Drew Keith O'Meara in the first game yesterday, Connor Wood and some of those perimeter players on the Carlton Ravens, and Ogundokin has shown why he was the RSEQ MVP. He's looked like a great player on one leg, against all those elite guys that he's had to match up with all weekend. Imagine this guy full speed that people in Quebec get to see every single weekend. He's proven himself on this stage. He's proven himself to his coach. He's earned respect for his teammates. He's ready to carry the load. So Richie Kansamata, good example of how he can dominate a game without scoring. He didn't hit a field goal tonight, but he's gonna Right now he's got eight points, five assists, three rebounds, two steals. It's not about filling the score column, it's about making sure that it's filled by your teammates. It's about playing your game 
right from the opening tip, he grabbed the basketball, ran it down the court, and has just been talking and running and moving and gathering guys and just keeping Dalhousie with their flow. It became a Dalhousie style of basketball about midway through the third quarter. McGill could not match it. And it speaks a lot to how much character it takes to do that despite the disappointing loss. The way they went out last night, they've just went through the roof and pulled this one out of a hat once again. Yeah, great bounce back effort here for the Tigers. Every game this weekend went down to the wire as it usually does for Dalhousie in these big game situations. And these guys, not only will these seniors finish their career as three-time AUS champions, adding a bronze at Nationals, what a career for Jared Reed, Richie Canzamata, Cashrell Lawrence, and Ryle Stroud too deserves some mention. Got the AUS Championship and the U Sports Bronze Medal in his final season. Well, certainly not over. You gotta feel pretty comfortable with a six point lead with Dalhousie's defense. Although they gave away a pretty open three that last side out for Miguel. Watch out for the inbounder here, Jenning Lung. He's four of six from beyond the arc today. Dao gets it, puts it up. Off back rim, Lawrence skies up for one last rebound. And McGill is gonna foul. So Kanzamata headed back to the free throw line where he's eight of nine. Yeah, coach didn't want to foul there. He was trying to, he was trying to signal them. It would have been classy, let Dow bounce out on that. Players playing situational basketball, playing it right out to the end, can't blame them there. But a little one last highlight, one last ovation for this guy. Richie Kanzamata comes out of Toronto makes Halifax his adopted home, and he's gonna bring some bronze over to campus. One of two, and as the final seconds tick away, Kansamata's called for a foul, and it's a good way to kind of kill some of the energy as... Well, they couldn't help but trap one last time. Yeah, that's the, he'll go out the way he came in, trapping, playing aggressively right down to the final seconds. And the two-time AUS defensive player of the year picks up his fourth personal, sends Lung to the free throw line. And, you know, for Jen and Lung, another guy who's graduating, what a game he had today, what a weekend he had. And another guy came in as a walk-on, but deserves a lot of credit for the impact he's made to this McGill program. It's a lasting impression on what guards need to do to succeed in the system. 16 points tonight, four threes, leads his team in points per game, or points in this evening, I guess I should say. And he's gonna check out here now to a nice applause. And now we get a timeout. <laughs> so the coaches continue to coach. Coach DeViro doesn't really understand. I think Plato might be bringing out some of his guys and coaching down to the final seconds here as just two seconds remain in this one, but a reminder, coming up next, 2 p.m. Atlantic time, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Sportsnet 360, the U Sports National Championship Final, the Carlton Ravens, six-time defending champions, take on the upstart Ryerson Rams. Yeah, I got a little thrown off there when I saw Coach Plato come to the table. I was trying to pump up Jenny Long, and he's looking for a timeout, but you know, with the way things have gone, every moment's a coaching moment. They came in on the rough end of a game last night. They just want to get it in. McGill is out there and ready. And he's game planning something. I don't know what they're going to do right here. You'd expect them just to get it in balance. I and hope so. Put the clock out, but. Good luck there at those players. Reed, Kansamata, Lawrence. Tigers legends all the way down to the end. And that'll do it. The Dalhousie Tigers win the bronze. And the fantastic career of these fifth year seniors finishes with some hardware. And Coach Plato looking emotional there on the sideline. 
And Dalhousie, what a season, what a tournament, what a job hosting this U Sports Final Eight. We're gonna miss to see a lot of these guys on the court, both on the U Sports stage and particularly out east where we live, Al, and calling these guys every single night. It's emotional to lose them. For Coach Plato, it's like losing your sons out there. He follows these guys for the rest of their life. They'll be receiving Christmas cards for the next 35 years, no doubt. But to lose the bronze medal last year, come out, know how that feels. Turn it around one more time. Good to see Dalhousie on that winning note. And credit to Miguel. They fought all weekend long. They'll be back. Our SEQ powers. So the final score here from the Scotiabank Center in the bronze medal game. The Dalhousie Tigers, 69. The McGill Redmond, 63. Signing off for the final time this weekend for Adam Dechan, for producer Neil and our entire TV1 crew. My name's Alan April. Thanks for watching our coverage of the U Sports Final Eight live on TV1.